Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. Um, I'm going through the M M1 paper, International A Level, um, LXL, October 2019. I'm going to answer question number three now. And number three is about a car of mass 800 kilograms towing a trailer of mass 400 kilograms up a straight road using a, tro a tow bar. The tow bar is parallel to the road and parallel to the direction of motion of the car. The road is inclined to the horizontal and angle alpha, where sine alpha is 1 over 7. The engine of the car produces a constant driving force of magnitude d newtons. The resistance to the motion of the car from non-gravitational forces is modeled as a single force of magnitude 420 newtons and the resistance to the motion of the trailer from non-gravitational forces is modeled as a single force of magnitude 300 newtons. The car and trailer are modeled as particles and the tow bar is modeled as a light rod. Given that the tension in the tow bar is 2060 newtons, find the value of D. Okay, so first of all, let's make a nice clear diagram showing the situation. So we have a road which is inclined to a angle. Okay, so it's inclined to an angle. The angle is alpha. Okay, so the angle is alpha. So that's alpha. And you have a car pulling a trailer. So let's say this is the car. And let's say this is the trailer over here. All right, now they are connected with a tow bar. They're connected by a tow bar. Okay. And there's a driving force that's pulling the car along, up the slope, okay, they're, they're moving up the slope, it says, up a straight road, okay, and we have the, the resistance to motion of the car and the trailer, so I'll call this C, that's for the car, this is T for the trailer. Right, so the resistance to motion of the car is 420 newtons and for the trailer it's 300 newtons. Okay, in fact, I'll, I'll put that up here. And I'll just put this up there a bit as well so that I can space for something else later on. All right, uh, you have the tension in the string, in the tow bar. That tension when we're considering the trailer is acting in this direction, when we're considering the car is acting in this direction. Okay, because the car is pulling the trailer up. Okay, and the trailer is slowing the car down. Okay, now we also have the weight of the car and vertically down and the weight of the trailer vertically down. And we have the reaction forces because they're in contact, which are perpendicular to the surface. So that's R trailer, R car. For the car, its mass is um, 800 kilograms. So this is 800 G Newtons. And the trailer, its mass is 400 kilograms. So this is 400 G Newtons. Okay, so now we need to resolve these forces horizontal and or well not horizontal parallel and perpendicular to the direction of motion so this is the component of this force um, perpendicular to the motion and this is a component parallel to the motion same with this one so we're gonna have to work out what those are okay so here we have this angle is alpha and this angle is alpha. Now, how do we know these angles are both alpha? I explained in a previous video why this angle is the same as that angle. It's due to similarity. Um, so, if you look at my videos on statics, you'll find it in the statics playlist. Okay, now, 
so this angle alpha is the same as this angle there so this here would be 400 g now because you have to resolve this force going into the angle given you're going to use cosine so it's 400 g times cosine alpha and here because you're resolving this force going away from the angle given this is going to be 400 g times sine alpha it's basically this is the adjacent side so you can use cosine and this is the opposite side if you're going in this direction opposite this angle so you're going to use sine so similarly here this will be 800 g cosine alpha and here's 800 g sine alpha all right so these are all the forces acting upon this system i've just drawn them all together now um so this is the tension here that's the tension there okay this is not the tension this is basically the resistance to motion okay that's the resistance to motion this is the tension of the string so we know the tension is 2060 newtons so this is 2060 newtons as is this okay so we know the tension so that's known so we've got to find the driving force okay now what we need to know is the acceleration we need to know the acceleration of this system for us to be able to find um, you know the driving force because we know that the force the resultant force is equal to the mass times the acceleration okay so we have to find that acceleration going up the plane okay it's accelerating up the plane so we've got to find the acceleration now here we have all the forces and all the values we have if we consider the um, trailer so if we consider the trailer we have everything we need if we consider the trailer all the forces we have on the trailer okay we have basically um, we know this tension and we know that the resistance to motion we know the component of the weight parallel to the um, you know a parallel to the to the motion so if we if we take this as positive up the plane we have 2060 that's the tension minus 200 which was the resistance to motion um, actually it's 300 not 200 that's the 300 that three's got hidden under there you want to be careful of that that's the resistance to motion okay and minus this is 400 g times sine alpha is equal to the mass which is 400 times the acceleration which is what we have to find and we know that the sine of alpha is 1 over 7 they told us that so we know the sine of alpha is 1 over 7 that's something that they told us and we can deduce from this what the cosine of alpha is going to be because if the sine of alpha is 1 over 7 in fact we don't even need it we don't even need the cosine of alpha right we don't there's no friction uh, that we have to calculate anything so we just can use sine of alpha as 1 over 7 okay so we can say this is um that's 300 okay so you have 2060 minus 300 minus 400 times so you're gonna have 2060 minus 300 minus 400 times 9.8 times 1 over 7 um, divided by 400 is going to give you the acceleration okay so I'll just stick this in my calculator all of that and we'll get that sorted out so we're going to have 2060 minus 300 minus 400 times 9.8 um, times 1 over 7 divided by 400 that gives us 3 that seems that will be right so acceleration is equal to 3 meters per second squared now that's not the answer that's a step towards the answer we have to find the value of d the driving force now to find the value of the driving force I'm going to consider the system as one 
particle, one object. So I'm going to consider as one object going up this hill, going up this slope. So if I consider it as one big object, okay, one big object with a combined mass, okay, I've got the driving force. I know the acceleration is 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 three meters per second squared. Okay, I've got the driving force and I've got the resistance to motion. Okay, and I've got the component of the weight. Let me just do that a bit neater than this. Okay. All right. So I've got my combined particle. So I have my driving force. I have my driving force. I have the resistance to motion. I have the weight. I have the reaction force, which I don't really need. Okay, those are the things that I have. So again, resolving this force parallel or perpendicular and parallel to the to the plane. Okay, so now the total combined mass of these two is basically 800 plus 400, which is 1200. So this is 1200 G. This is alpha, as we remember. Okay. And the combined resistance, the combined resistance is going to be 420 plus 300, which is 720. So I can take it as one big particle. So the combined resistance is 720 Newtons. So this is going to be 100, 1,200 G times, away from the angle, sine alpha. And this is the driving force. So these are all the forces acting on this as we're taking it as one big particle. Why do we do that? Because then we don't have to think about the tension in here. Um, you know, I mean, I could actually just use that, to be honest. I could just use that, actually. I don't have to take it as one big particle. I can do it. In fact, I'll show you how it works in both ways. I could have just taken this, um, just looked at the car and find the driving force from that because I have every force except for that. So I could have done that also. There's, there's options here. All right, so I didn't have to take it as one particle. That is something that I just decided to do, but I'm gonna show you that we're gonna get the same answer either way. So I know that the resultant force is D minus 70, 720 minus 1200 G times sine alpha, and that's equal to the total mass, which is 1200 times acceleration, which is three. So we can say that D is equal to, that's going to be 3,600 plus 720 plus 1200 G. Uh, well, let me just put that as 1200 times 9.8 times one over seven. 1200 times 9.8 times sine alpha, which is one over seven. So that's going to give us what D is. So let me just stick that in my calculator. I have 3,600 plus 720 plus 1,200 times 9.8 times 1 over 7. And that gives me 6,000 newtons that's the driving force 6000 newtons now i'm going to show you how if we took this as one particle that we would have got the same thing so i'm just going to take this to the next page not take it as one particle i mean just concentrate on the car alone we could find the value of d just by doing that also okay so if we concentrate on just the car alone um you know so we, we're only concentrating on the car not the trailer, not the whole thing, just the car. We should get the same answer that we just got here before. So if we resolve the forces in this direction, remember it's accelerating. We work that out as three meters per second squared. So we have here the forces acting up are D and the opposing forces are opposite negative. So you have the tension, which is 2000 and, not read my writing, 2060. Okay, so that's 2060. Uh, minus 420 minus 800g sine alpha so that's the driving force opposing it is 
the tension in this in the in the tow bar and the resistance to motion for the car and the component of the weight acting down the plane and that's equal to the mass of the car which is 800 times the acceleration which is 3 it's using resultant force is mass times acceleration okay so that should give us the value of d so here d is going to be um, 800 times 3 which is 2400 plus 2060 um, plus 420 and plus 800 times 9.8 times 1 over 7 so that should give us the same answer so let's see what happens it should be 6000 so we have 2400 plus 2060 plus 420 plus 800 times 9.8 times 1 over 7 close that bracket and that gives us 6000 exactly the same answer so it really doesn't matter which way you use you can just concentrate on the car alone you can take the system as a whole both of them would give us the same result so that's the answer to this question here um it's just like you know quite a long-winded question normally uh, or sometimes they ask you to find the acceleration of the system first and then part a part b they lead up to you know basically showing you the way to solve the problem but in this case, they just chucked you in the deep end and you've got to figure out what to do right from the beginning. So this is October 2019, question number three. Other questions from this particular paper can be found um, when you click on the link that should show up over here. Other questions from this topic, which is to do with dynamics, can be found in the, I think it will be under forces um, and friction will be found in this playlist over here and you can click on this link to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and in the description you'll find links to useful documents which will take you to different playlists for my IG, IGCSE, my AS and my A level content so um, please you know, have a look at those and share them with your friends if you find they will be beneficial Thank you for watching and see you soon.